Welcome everybody to a look at another Warner Brothers Archive Collection release and it is 1952's Ivanhoe. So this is directed by Richard Thorpe, who I've not seen anything else from before, but he did do a couple of films with the one and only Elvis Presley. And it's an historical adventure film, clocking in at 106 minutes long. And it's a really rather impressive cast with the likes of Robert Taylor, who I've seen in the likes of High Wall and The Night Walker, as well as Elizabeth Taylor, who was in Suddenly Last Summer and Identikit, as well as Joan Fontaine, who was in the likes of Suspicion and Kiss the Blood Off My Hands, and George Sanders, who I've seen in 14 other films with the likes of All About Eve and A Shot in the Dark, which is the best of the Pink Panther films really impressing me. So this is an adaptation of Sir Walter Scott's classic story of the chivalrous Ivanhoe who joins with Robin of Loxley, or well known as Robin Hood, in the fight against Prince John and for the return of King Richard the Lionheart. So even though the script uh, to this is somewhat stilted at times and the characterization is rather by the numbers, I nonetheless found this to be an enjoyable effort primarily due to the great cast and the solid pacing. The production is also predominantly great, it is well shot, um, which is enlivened by the fact it's got some really rather gorgeous looking technical um, on the go. The score is appropriately rousing, the castle siege is really rather fun, and it is overall engrossing. So yeah, really rather enjoyed this. Um, I say the castle siege is fun, in part it's because some of the production is a little bit iffy, especially when it comes to the shooting of arrows, which basically just looks like people are just throwing them off screen as they don't look like they're being fired at all, but that's just part of the charm of that whole um, scene. But there's also some darker elements to that scene in the fact that one of the characters gets pushed into a burning part of the castle and then you hear screams and the rubble falls down on him and he basically gets burnt alive, which... For a PG rated film, which is yeah the second lowest rating you can get in the UK, that is really rather quite dark. And another character, um, one of the basically the night uh, the soldiers from the opposing side also gets the same treatment. Only the floor falls out from underneath him, and he gets completely burnt to alive and buried under all the rubble as well. So uh, yeah, really rather quite dark in a couple of areas. But aside from that, it's just some basically you know, your typical kind of 50s film in a lot of ways and that it's really rather quite passive in terms of its violence. There's no real blood or, any, or gore or anything like that. There's a little bit of a, a wound that one of the characters gets on a shoulder, but outside of that, it is really rather by the numbers in terms of its depiction of violence. But those darker elements uh, certainly, um, yeah, was surprising. And overall, like I said, the siege is fun. It's um, especially when you uh, see a... Um, all of the people fighting and the massive production that's going into it and the look of the castle and whatnot. So, yeah, that's certainly the best part of the film as far as I'm concerned. It is certainly better than the fight scene that concludes the film overall, which is a little bit, you know, annoying because it's quite repetitive. But, yeah, that siege is excellent and, uh, yeah, the cast is really good as well and, yeah, it's generally well paced and such and such. So, yeah, the uh, film itself looks really rather good on this Blu-ray. The Technicolor looks superb. It doesn't hasn't really aged all that badly. And in terms of extras, we get a couple of extras. We've got a uh, Oscar-winning Tom and Jerry short called uh, The Two Musketeers. So it's a seven-minute cartoon that is also in Technicolor, which is kind of related to this um and it's also related to the fact that there's a another film uh in the warner brother archive collection that this was released alongside of we've also seen prince of the city but the third and final film released alongside this um and prince of the city for december was and is the three musketeers which i will eventually get around to reviewing so yeah it's kind of linked up to that i'm surprised that cartoon short isn't on that disc to be honest it would make more sense but Regardless, yeah, that's uh, yeah, a short, uh, a cartoon short that I'll eventually get around to seeing. And there's also the theatrical trailer on this as well. So, yeah, I really highly recommend this if you're into your historical adventure films. Um, like I said, it doesn't really reinvent the wheel or anything like that. And there's no major surprises to be in store outside of those couple of darker moments. Um, but, yeah, enjoyable enough. And, yeah, and an entertaining effort and at that as well. And considering now you had no real expectations having not seen anything from the director before, it was overall a fun time. So yeah, if you've seen this one before, that's hear your thoughts on it. But nonetheless, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.